guy. He walked with us. He was obedient till death, and he did it because he loved you. That's that's the reality. If you don't want to accept that, that that's up to you. You're gonna to have to give an account to God. You might say, you might say, okay, he believed Jesus was son of God. Was it son of God? Was it God? He's both. He's both. Yeah. Or do you think God knows everything? This Dawid script is boring, brother. No, no, it's not boring. Do you believe Listen, God knows everything? You, your, your people have put it in your brain the same no, questions no. all day long. No, no, it's not that. And, and you're brainwashed, it seems. Your brain is like... Because you're repeating... Do you think it's a coincidence that I've heard all these questions before? Do you think it's a coincidence that I've heard all these questions before? You're just throwing out questions that you've been taught. Does he know everything? Listen, the fullness of deity... The full... Question on me is what we're having a discussion. Yeah, but, but the questions that you're asking me, they're, they're literally word for word. They're literally word for word the questions. Listen, we don't need to be petty about all the questions. The fact is, Jesus is God in flesh. So when you're saying about human, yeah, he took on human nature fully. So there was limitation. limitation. No. Why do you say that? Oh, you say God took a human form. I put this jacket on. Am I am I this jacket? No, no, I understand what you're saying. Exactly. So the form of human was yeah. God or not? Of course he was God. <laughs> of course God knows everything. Boy Jesus didn't know a lot of things. Because he was hundred percent human and he didn't know he did what do you mean he didn't know a lot of things? What do you mean he didn't know a lot of things? What do you mean? Oh the hour the tree has to feel the freedom of God. Our, we prostrate to God. We worship to God. He prostrate to God. What's the truth of the Bible? So what if he prostrate to God? And it doesn't make sense that God is prostrate to God. You see, you're not listening because I said to you that he humbled himself and he took on a form. So you're not listening because you want to talk. Why you saying he was a human? No, he took on flesh. So his origin is not human. Okay, so he was unto us a, a, a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The human nature had a beginning. Okay, let's 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 put let's put the human. Listen, let's be honest. Wait, 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 brother. Pause, pause, pause. Don't regurgitate. Don't vomit. Don't work on it. Let's put let's put the, let's put God nature to the side because as humans, listen, as humans. None of us are going to be able to. You're still saying the same thing and it's very boring. It's and you're, boring. you're stuck. I'm not stuck. For one second, I'm answering. But I've answered. I've been standing not. here for a long time with you. Oh, but you're stuck saying torture, torture. You're still saying the same thing. And I've explained to you that God did not torture, but it was sinners that put, that nailed Jesus to the cross. It's sinners like you and I that caused Jesus to be on the cross. But you're still saying torture, torture. Stop with that nonsense and accept God himself did not torture Jesus. It's sinners. Human sinners that torture Jesus. You You're still not listening. You're still thinking about the next thing. You got forgiven. Listen, let's put that to the side. Do you believe in the Ten Commandments? That's one of them. Yeah. Do you believe in the Ten Commandments? Do you believe in the Ten Commandments? Oh, uh, I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> We're talking about something else, and I'm talking to you about the Ten Commandments. So you shall have no other gods aside from you. Um, you shall not take your Lord God in vain. Adultery. No, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. We're talking about something a bit different because the fact is we must not be arrogant to, to enforce that we understand God fully. We don't know God fully. So, and we can't say it doesn't make sense to us. Our minds are very limited compared to God. So I just want to put that over here for two seconds. I want to talk about something that we can relate to, i.e. the Ten Commandments. Now, you know, 
first commandment. I believe in all of the commandments. So what's the first commandment? So, I, I, you know, I was the one that brought up the topic what about ten commandments. commandments. So let me let me complete my let me land let me land. So you believe in the ten commandments, right? Including you shall not have any other gods aside from me. You shall not commit idolatry. That, that is um, not have graven images. Yeah. You shall not um, take the Lord's name in vain. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. Yeah, there's a couple. I want to focus on adultery. What is your understanding of adultery? I know where you're trying to get. I know where you're trying to get. But there's adultery, right? You might bring the age of Okay, fine. I know no, never mind. Let me do that. Then. So adultery then is if you have a married couple and one of them goes and um, basically has sex with someone that is not your wife or husband that's what adultery is you understand okay okay so my position to you is do you think then if that's the, the definition of adultery and the bible teaches that a marriage is between one man one woman yeah do you think that having four wives is not adultery You never answered my, my that's, question. That's, 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 that's the first feature of your answer. If you think about it. God's commandment given to Moses, thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery is when you have sex outside of marriage. A marriage is between one man and one woman. Um, no. How many wives did Adam have? Okay. How many, how many wives? Over 800. Multiple. He had multiple wives and multiple concubines. But do you think that is the same? Is it, is it right? Is it, is it just? It's not right. <laughs> but do you think that there is a difference between um, a king marrying a whole bunch of wives way down the line and the initial creation of God? That was the blueprint. <laughs> God, that God created a blueprint, which is Adam and Eve. Yeah, there's a difference between that, God's own hand, not creating Adam and four wives, or three wives, or ten, or eleven, but one. That was God's blueprint. That is different from Solomon, a human being, having multiple wives. Huh? It's before Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So, do you understand my point? So, God's blueprint was always Adam and Eve. Yeah. This is what Jesus taught. He said that if you divorce your wife, we talk I'm about talking about certain time. We're talking about Adam and Eve, which is like in the first human being. But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the blueprint. The no, no, no. But what I'm saying is, well, of course, from Adam and Eve, then the corruption happens. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So naturally, as time goes on, there's going to be more corruption. We can go off topic all you like, but what I'm getting at is, what I'm getting at is, what I'm getting that is there's one thing about the nature of God we can argue all day long and realistically we're human beings we're human beings we're human beings we can't understand God fully but we no I'm not we've given you three people have given you information but aside from that what I'm getting at is what about the ten commandments that we can actually relate to clearly as human beings 
says, no, and it also says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. And Jesus said, You cannot divorce your wife unless of sexual immorality. And also, we know that death also breaks that covenant. But anything outside of that, you make your wife an adulterer. So it, it's completely contradictory to what Islam teaches. Because you haven't answered the point. That has been the blueprint from the beginning. Jesus has said, It's one man, one woman. Now in the Quran, it says, Four women. Why are you allowing yourself to be an adulterer? Do I four wives? I'm saying you theoretically. Solomon in your Bible has like over 800 wives. What do you think of that? That's a sin. That wasn't good. But I will say at that time, and actually when you look at history, in terms of trying to build alliances, that happened a lot. Where kings would marry with different people. But are you? But none of you lot are kings. I'm sorry to say. But in any case, it's still a sin. Oh, Siraj, please, man. It's always the same story. But what I'm getting at is that, you know what, we can argue all day long about the nature of God. As human beings, it's not possible that we're going to understand God fully. However, even if we look at the Ten Commandments and we look at, you know, the basic tenets that God gave us humans to adhere to, then we see, actually, there's a lot of contradictions in the Quran, and I use adultery as a, a perfect example. Adam and Eve were the blueprint, yeah? God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, to be fair. Neither Adam and uh, Latoya, Carmen, Joseph, you know. Adam and Eve. And Jesus reiterated that fact. Yet yeah, now, here we come to the Quran, where you can have four wives, where you can divorce your wives. When actually a man can divorce his wife, and if he divorces her three times, they cannot be reconciled. The woman now has to go and get married, consummate the marriage before she can even come back to the husband. What's the wisdom in that? What's the point of that? It's corruption. So before you start thinking about the nature of God, first of all, acknowledge that you have sin. Second of all, acknowledge that those bad deeds need to be accounted for. But also just look at the basic commandments that God gave and, and see if it aligns with Islam. It doesn't. I've spoken to the brother at length. He's thrown a lot of things, contradictions, and actually he didn't want to hear. All we can do is pray. Oh, he's coming back. Okay, fair enough. So Raj has taken him off to have a conversation. He did that to me last week as well. Oh well, that is a good time to start. I'm tired myself, um, but I don't know. May he think about it. All we can do is, is sow the seed and try our best to, you know, defend our faith and give them answers. We don't know everything, unfortunately, but only God can give the increase. So we just say pray um, that He will come to to Christ. God bless. God bless everyone.